Okay, welcome back for video five. Our job now is to uh, still deal with the spring going up and down in a vertical position. We've already graphed the amplitude versus time graph. And we're now going to do a graph of velocity versus time. So on this side, we'll keep track of the energy that's involved. So, Okay, so at this position, we're at zero. And we have kinetic energy plus elastic potential energy because the spring is stretched from the equilibrium position. And we know that stretch is uh, 0 0.098 meters or 9.8 centimeters. We're going to call this zero for gravitational potential energy, but not zero for elastic potential energy. I just think it's easier. Now, when we pull the spring down here, it comes to a complete stop. So we have a combination of el elastic potential energy plus gravitational potential energy. So if we go back to uh, chapter five ideas here, which is just based on energy, our energy conservation equation that becomes, in this case, a reminder that we have a negative value for this. So I'll put a little negative sign on top of that since we're below the zero. So we're going to have elastic potential energy plus gravitational potential energy equals kinetic energy plus elastic potential energy. Okay, uh, in red I'll put all those numbers in here. So elastic potential energy, we will be one half, our K value, which is 25. And we have a 0 0.098 meters, okay, of a stretch. We're going to be adding five more to that. So that's going to be 0 0.148 squared plus gravitational potential energy, which is 0 0.25 times 9.8. And we'll multiply that by a negative 0 0.05 since we went downwards. That's going to equal one half times 0.25 multiplied by v squared, and that's what we're going to be trying to find. Plus, and I'll write this down here: one half my k value, which was 25, times my equilibrium stretch, which is 0 0.098 squared. What we're going to find is our maximum velocity, of course, is right here. Velocity at this position is zero. Maximum velocity here. And then when it comes up to here, and we're looking at this oscillation here. So we'll have zero velocity here. We will have zero velocity here. But when we're in the equilibrium position, we're going to find that it's 0.5 meters per second uh, based on that conservation of energy equation there. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll place on my graph here, a uh, positive 0.5 and a negative 0.5 for the meters per second. Let's divide our interval into four equal spaces again here, same as our graph here again. Okay, so let's see, at amplitude maximum is where we're starting with. So we're starting with a zero velocity here. We, uh, as we pull the spring down. Now it'll approach very quickly to the zero here for the position. That's going to be a maximum velocity here of 0.5 because that's going upwards. We call positive upwards. It'll then oscillate to the top, which will go back down to zero again. Now it'll go back down here through the equilibrium position. Now we're heading downwards at max velocity, so it'll be a negative. And then one more time we'll oscillate, okay, all the way down to the zero, or all the way down to the uh, uh, lowest position and back to velocity equals zero again. So then this is what our graph will look like. Trying to draw that as neatly as possible as a nice sine wave. Again, that's the uh, derivative of our, of our cosine wave. Okay, to get us here. Okay, now let me clear that all out so we can do the acceleration. Okay, versus time graph nicely. So. 
let's take a look at forces now. Okay. At the equilibrium position here, we do not have any spring force. So force of the spring equals zero here, but we still have gravity force, right? Because remember, our, our net force is always going to be force gravity downwards, and then force of the spring upwards. Okay, and up here, we're going to have a force of the spring. Now that's going to be pushing this thing back downwards, right? So that's going to be equal to a negative. And then when we get down here, our force of the spring here is going to equal a positive. So we have zero force of the spring here. We have a negative force of the spring here, and then a positive force of the spring here. Let's look at the force net equation. So force net, in this case, is going to be force of the spring, okay, minus the force of gravity here. Okay. Now let's look at this equilibrium position here. When I said force of the spring equals zero here, that means the force of the spring is going to be equal to the force of the gravity here. So there's going to be no net force going on here at all. Okay, so the force of the spring and gravity cancel each other out, so there's no acceleration. So acceleration at this position here is going to equal zero. Let's plug in numbers here. So we have force net. We always put in ma for that. So 0.25 multiplied by a is going to equal the force of the spring minus force of gravity. Okay, well, let's do the force of the spring at this lowest position here. Well, that's going to be 25 times 0.148. Okay, now we're going to subtract out the force of gravity, which is 0.25 times 9.8. And we're going to get an acceleration, okay, equal to 5 meters per second squared. Okay, now this is to be our acceleration versus time graph here. So... Let's go ahead and mark that. So we've got a positive 5 here and a negative 5 here. Okay. And let me do that in green. So we're starting at our lowest position here, which is what we just calculated. And that's going to be an acceleration going upwards of positive 5. It's now going to reach the 0 mark. So that means where the force of the spring equals force gravity. And uh, if one more time, I divide this up in the four equal time intervals. At this point, we will be at zero. Okay, at the very top, our acceleration is now going to go downwards. We're at maximum acceleration in the negative direction. Then we'll reach back to zero again where gravity and spring balance out. And then one more time, we'll reach our lowest position here where acceleration is positive. So, and this is our graph. So we go from a cosine graph that was here and then to a sine graph and then back to a cosine graph. Uh, notice how, and again, if we remember, this graph went up and down like this. It started down, then went up here like this. And then this was a regular sine graph. Now this one goes in this direction here like this. And that's how you handle it. And uh, you'll see that these values compare uh, very nicely with the spring that oscillates back and forth in our previous videos. Yes.